Hi, welcome to this tutorial, another in my series on differential equations. And what we're going to look at here is an example on cooling curves. So I'll just read through the question. We've got the rate at which a body loses temperature at any instant is proportional to the amount by which the temperature of the body exceeds room temperature at that instant. And we've got a container of hot liquid. It's placed in a room of temperature 19 degrees C. And in eight minutes, the liquid cools from 83 degrees C to 51 degrees C. And we're asked, how long does it take for the liquid to cool from 27 degrees C to 25 degrees C? Now to appreciate this problem, not that you have to do this, but uh, what I've got here is what we call a cooling curve. And you can see the curve gives us the temperature, I've called it theta here, in degrees C, and how it cools relative to the time t in minutes. It comes down and it approaches room temperature here at 19 degrees C. It doesn't cross this line, it just, as I say, approaches it. 19 degrees C here, this is the an asymptote for this particular curve. So, how do we go about problems like this? Well, first of all, let's just put some information on that we're given. We're told that as the temperature cools from 83 degrees C to 51 degrees C, we'll just mark that on the graph. Remember, this is a sketch, so it's not accurately drawn from the point of view of a scale. But at these two temperatures, what I'm going to do is associate a time for these temperatures. So those times, let's say, are T1 and T2. And similarly, when the temperature goes from 27 degrees C to 25 degrees C, we'll mark those on, I'm going to let the time go from T3 to T4. So in this question, when it asks us how long does it take for the liquid to cool from 27 degrees to 25 degrees C, that time is going to be given by T4 minus T3. So that's what we're going to be heading towards working out, T4 minus T3. So to do something like this involves differential equations. We've got to set up a differential equation which describes what we've got here, the rate at which the body loses temperature. We're told that the rate that it loses temperature that's say d theta by dt. Let's start off by putting that in here. We've got that the rate of change of temperature d theta by dt in this instant is proportional, so we'll put proportional, to the amount by which the temperature of the body exceeds room temperature at that instant. So that's going to be theta, the temperature, minus the room temperature, 19 degrees C. So we've got that that's proportional to theta minus 19. Now we need to change this to an equation by introducing a constant K. So I put therefore d theta by dt, the rate of change of temperature, now equals a constant, which I'm going to call K, and that's going to be multiplied by theta minus 19. Now, I could leave it like this, but generally we have k as a positive constant. And I know that the temperature is decreasing, the rate of change of temperature is decreasing. So the gradient here, you can see, is always going to be negative. So if I'm going to keep k as a positive constant, I need to introduce a negative sign. So be careful when you're dealing with positive constants and you've got something that's decreasing. You need to put a minus there. OK, well, we've got this far. Now we need to solve this differential equation. And we do this by separating the variables, putting all the thetas on one side and all the t's on the other. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with this. If not, just look at earlier tutorials on this series where we separate the variables. You'll find that on my website. OK, so if we do se separate the variables, then we've got 1 over theta minus 19. 
okay, d theta equals minus k dt. And we have to integrate both sides. So we're going to slip an integral sign down there. We'll put the minus on the outside there and we'll slip an integral sign in there. So what is the integral of 1 over theta minus 19 with respect to theta? Well that's the natural log of the mod of theta minus 19. If I integrate minus k with respect to t, that's going to equal minus kt. And we mustn't forget the constant. We're going to have a constant from here, a constant from this integral. But if I subtract, say, the constant from this side, away from the constant on this side, we're going to get just one constant. I'm going to call that plus c. So we've got the natural log of the mod of theta minus 19 then equals minus kt plus c. And we've got to work out what these constants are. And to do that, I just turn to these initial conditions that we're given. We know that as the temperature went from 83 degrees to 51 degrees c, the time went from t1 to t2. So when theta equals 83, t was equal to t1. So let's just put that in here. When theta equaled 83 degrees c, t equaled t1. And if we substitute this into this equation, let's just identify this equation as equation number 1. If we sub these into there, what we get is the natural log, we'll put there for the natural log of 83 minus 19, which is going to be 64. We don't need a mod anymore because we know that this is a positive value. Equals minus k times t1, so it's minus k t1 plus the constant c. Now, I can't do much with this because I've got two unknowns, k and the c here. So let's just call this equation 2. Now remember, I'm trying to find out what t2 minus t1 is. I know it's 8 minutes, it's got it up here. So I need to build another equation, this time with t2 in it. So if we just come down through here, okay, we can say that when theta equaled the 51 degrees C, t was equal to t2. So when theta equals 51, t equals t2. And if we do the same thing, that is substitute these values into equation 1, we therefore have the natural log of 51 minus 19, which gives us 32. So the natural log of 32, again we don't need a mod around that because it's positive, equals minus k times t2 plus the constant c. Okay? Now let's call this equation 3. Now we want to establish t2 minus t1 because we know that that difference there is 8 minutes. And I can see that if I do equation 2, take away equation 3, I can generate t2 minus t1. Let's just put this down that equation 2 minus equation 3, it gives us what? If we just take the right hand side, we've got 2 take away 3, so we've got minus kt1 minus minus kt2, well that's going to be plus kt2. So can you see that we would therefore have k bracket t2 minus t1. Okay. The constant c would disappear. This c minus this c would go. And then we'd have this would equal the natural log of 64 minus the natural log of 32. So natural log of 64 minus the natural log of 32. So that's what we get when we do 2 take away 3. And if we use the rule here for logs, 
when you subtract it's the same as dividing that is the natural log of 64 by 32 so we therefore have k multiplied by t2 minus t1 equals the natural log of 64 over 32 and that's quite convenient because that obviously goes in twice so we'll just cancel that out 32 into 32 goes 1 but 32 into 64 goes 2 so we have that k t2 minus t1 equals the natural log of 2 but we know that uh, let's just put t2 minus t1 equals 8 8 minutes okay up here so we can just put this into this equation and so it follows that 8k k times 8 let's just call it 8k 8k equals the natural log of 2 so clearly therefore k must be equal to 1 8th multiplied by the natural log of 2 and now that I've got this I can start to work towards working out what t4 minus t3 is because this is the question essentially how long does it take the liquid to cool from 27 degrees C to 25 degrees C t4 minus t3 so I can now say that therefore when theta equals 27 t equals t3 and so from equation 1 let's just put this in from 1 what I now get is if I substitute this into here I get therefore the natural log of 27 minus 19 so that's going to be the natural log of 8 27 minus 18 that's going to equal minus k times t3 plus c so minus k times t3 plus that constant c now if I come down here we can also do much the same when we've got theta equaling 25 so when theta equals 25 we see that t equals t4 all right so if we substitute this into 1 we have that therefore the natural log of 25 minus 19 which gives us the natural log of 6 must equal minus k times t4 plus c and now if I call this equation 4 and the one up here equation 5 then by subtracting them if I do equation 4 minus equation 5 what does this give us okay so again if we take the logs away from one another we've got the log of 8 minus the log of 6 so natural log of 8 minus the natural log of 6 equals and if I factorize we've got minus kt3 minus minus kt4 so that's plus kt4 I can pull out a k rewrite that as t4 minus t3 and then we've got the constant c and this c when we subtract them they disappear remember it's t4 minus t3 that I'm after so therefore if I rearrange this we've got that t4 minus t3 equals well I need to divide by k so it's going to be 1 over k multiplied by the natural log of 8 minus the natural log of 6 well that's going to be the natural log of 8 over 6 if we simplify that part by the subtraction rule for logs I know what k is we worked it out earlier k was 1 eighth the natural log of 2 so if I'm doing 1 over k then and I, I substitute this into here we're going to get 8 over the natural log of 2 and that's going to be multiplied then by the natural log of 8 over 6 or well, that reduces to 4 thirds if we divide top and bottom by 2 
Okay, so therefore that is our time that it takes for the liquid to cool from 27 to 25 degrees C. So if I was to write in here therefore time to cool okay equals you could either write that as the exact form or if you work that out on your calculator what you get is 3.320 and so on and that would be given in minutes and you could write that to whatever accuracy that you want okay so I hope that's given you some idea, a very long question. I've had to cramp it up, I'm sorry, but that's just so that I can display it all on the one screen for you. But uh, as I say, I hope that's given you some idea how we can go about these kind of questions on cooling. All right.